So Jeff Keighley today hosted Opening Night Live. You guys see the logo behind me. Uh, it was the opening two plus hour, well really around I guess more like two hours, ceremony uh, for Gamescom. Now Gamescom, for those who don't know, is just like Europeans version of E3 uh, and not so much their version in, so, in like having a ton of press conferences or stuff like that. They do have some press conferences, not like to the level of E3 typically, uh, but they do have essentially a show floor. You go and play demos and all that jazz, which is very similar to what E3 was here in the West, but obviously for the other half of the world. Uh, and it's become a very popular show over the years, and they have successfully navigated um, attendance and all these other issues that E3 has really struggled to solve. Uh, but obviously a lot of what we care about over here is that the in-person event is much smaller obviously with COVID and everything still being a thing. So obviously there's been a focus more on digital presentations and that began with opening night live by Jeff Keighley, which essentially became a mini E3 like presentation. If you guys remember what he did for summer games fest, not so much the after effect when he had the indie showcase and some other things linked to it, but the main summer game fest show that he did, it was kind of similar to that, except obviously for gamescom and with a different branding opening night live, uh, cause it was nighttime over there, but, kind of in the middle of the day over here. Now, we're not gonna summarize everything that happened at this event, uh, even though I could, because I really wanna focus on the Nintendo aspects of it. There were basically three major games showing off that are coming to Nintendo Switch, uh, one of them being a brand new announcement, so that's really exciting. So we're gonna focus on those games and talk a little bit about them while showing off uh, what we did see of them. Uh, and then, obviously, my overall impressions on the show, and uh, hint, hint, it was better than E3 on the whole, and E3 had Nintendo. For those who don't know, Nintendo is not participating in Gamescom, and traditionally doesn't participate in Gamescom, just like Nintendo doesn't participate in Tokyo Game Show either. Anyways, before I do that, I uh, remind you guys, we are giving away a Switch OLED. That's right, the white Switch OLED coming up the same day as Metroid Dread. We're giving one away to one of you subscribers out there. That's right, all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel. Now, I do appreciate if you drop a like on this video, comment, all that jazz. Uh, help spread the love uh, as we try to get on our road here to 100,000 subscribers. Now we have a ways to go, right? 29, 28 and a half uh, thousand subscribers to go. So we got quite a bit of ways to go, but I believe in us folks. Let's push for that 100K and let's uh, get right into opening night live and the breakdown of Nintendo news from it. So one of the biggest surprises and one of the first things, we're going to do this in order of the way things were revealed, uh, was Marvel's Midnight Suns. Now Marvel's Midnight Suns is a game being made by 2K uh, and it's a game that I, when I initially saw the footage, it kind of went over my head that it was coming to Switch because they didn't really show gameplay. Gameplay of this game will be debuted on September 1st, so look forward to next week um, seeing some continued coverage of this game because if you couldn't tell from me reacting to the Spider-Man trailer, for those that watched that video, thank you so much. I am a big Marvel fan, but we haven't had a lot of reasons to be excited about Marvel games on Switch outside of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which was a really great get for Nintendo that they fully funded and own the rights to that particular game in that franchise. So what is Marvel's Midnight Suns? Well, we see a lot in the trailer, but a lot of it is just um, you know cinematics and all that. A um, bunch of different characters from Blade and Ghost Runner, Iron Man, Wolverine, etc., etc., etc. There's a new character unveiled, and it's a brand new superhero um, that is been approved by Marvel, but created by the team behind this game. But I think what, what what what's really interesting is that this game is a, is a tactics RPG, and this is important because the person who's leading the development of this was actually one of the lead creators of a series you've probably heard of before. XCOM. And if you haven't heard of XCOM, for shame, because XCOM was the inspiration behind games like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So if you think about how even, you know, on Switch, how, how combat works in that game or how combat works in like a Fire Emblem, that's kind of what you can expect here, an RPG tactics kind of game, which is basically just like those games, but for Marvel. So this is going to be really, really interesting to me, having a Marvelized version of this made by someone who has extensive experience at making high quality tactic RPGs. Now, uh, there is a little a little footage on it you're seeing here. As I said, gameplay unveil is next week. 
Uh, but it says, when hell awakens, only then can you stop it. Rise up and join a darker order of heroes to defeat Lilith before the dark hold is complete in this tactical RPG set in the darker side of the Marvel Universe. Uh, so yeah, really, really interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this game plays. I'm very curious which versions of these characters we're getting. Like, uh, I, you know, Ghost Rider is an example. Which version of him do we have? I, I just love Marvel in general. I'm really glad to see so many other franchises that aren't necessarily in the MCU yet, right? Like, Ghost Rider is not in the MCU yet. Um, Blade's not in the MCU yet, uh, etc. So I like to see some of these other things that aren't in the MCU but are part of Marvel's library represented. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with Marvel Midnight Suns uh, based on the fact of how much I've enjoyed XCOM, enjoyed um, obviously uh, the likes of Mario Plus Rabbids, and I'm really looking forward to Sparks of Hope. I'm obviously really looking forward to this game. I think this has a high chance to be one of the best Marvel games uh, out there. And I actually think Ultimate Alliance 3 was, a lot, was pretty good. So... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one, and it does come out next year. So again, uh, look forward to that. It comes out in March of next year. Now, next up uh, is the game that I think all of us were most looking forward to from Opening Night Live, and that is the Star Wars Lego Skywalker Saga, or I guess it's called Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Uh, for those who don't know, that is a Lego game, uh, obviously built around Star Wars, but it's built around all nine of the core movies in the franchise. So not the spinoffs like Rogue One and stuff, but the core episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So all nine of those movies are in this game, and it's supposed to be a lot more open. You're supposed to be able to travel between planets, uh, in case you weren't aware. And uh, obviously, it's going to tell the story of all of those movies but add in its own comedic twist as you can see in what they're calling the gameplay trailer number two because this is the only second publicly released trailer uh for this game so there's only really been the the, the, the end reveal trailer and then this one so uh it looks really really great it looks looks just as good and still i saw a private demo of this back at e3 2019 and that, that A lot of the stuff I saw in there is still not in these trailers. So I still know more about this game than you guys do. So uh, th some things I could talk about, of course. Some things I can't. But uh, yeah, the, the LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga, it, it, it's looking fantastic. Now, again, on the dark side of it, it was slated to come out this year. It has been delayed. It is going to be a spring 2022 release, but it is coming to Nintendo Switch. So, as a, just like that, just like the prior game with Marvel, um, the, you know, this is another game for 2022. Again, the Switch is looking stacked in 2022, even from a third-party perspective. And yes, I do expect both these games to be native on the system. I don't expect these to be streamed games. Uh, I want to be very clear on that. I think both uh, both of these franchises are going to end up being natively on, on the platform. So looks really, really good, and I hope you're excited for LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga, as I am, because to me this looks like this might be the greatest LEGO game, if not one of the better Star Wars games around. Now, one of the final titles uh, that, that that's at least, uh, to me, a bigger deal talked about at Gamescom for Switch is... Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Now, we knew this game was going to also be talked about at Opening Night Live. We found out a couple days ago, but we didn't know what they were going to show. And again, this was supposed to be a game released this year. So we did get a new uh, trailer for it, and it seemed to be the reveal trailer of April O'Neil being playable, which is obviously kind of cool. I think some of us probably would have preferred Splinter to be playable because it feels like Splinter feels like a more natural add to the four turtles because he was obviously their sensei, the one who taught them everything. So it would be um, interesting to have him playable. And it's possible we've seen in some of the some of the uh, cinematic footage uh, for it, the, the cartoon footage, that it looked like Splinter was fighting. So it's possible that maybe he's an unlockable character you already get later in the game. But April O'Neil is uh, going to be able to be a fighter in there. And she has her own unique moveset. Maybe one of my favorite things is when she does the mic drop move like that's you know, that's one of those the, the, those classic baller moves where it's like, oh yeah, I just owned you, mic drop. Uh, I, I really like that one. Um, so let me just read a little description they have for this game. It says, sporting her iconic yellow jumpsuit and trusty reporting gear, April unleashes flurries of hits against the Foot Clan's devious soldiers via new gameplay. Her agility and far-reaching slide kicks help her close in on targets quickly. And she once again proves the Turtles can rely on her unwavering support even through slices of pizza. So that's obviously really great news to add in April O'Neil, but as always, there's a bit of a caveat. It was supposed to come out this year. We had hoped it might have even been a shadow drop during Gamescom, 
but it's actually been delayed. So it is coming out in 2022, but not even a, a, a precise window like spring, summer, fall, which quarter, holiday. They just said 2022. So at some point next year, it's coming out. Again, another you know, you know multi-platform third-party game coming to Nintendo Switch. One that's got a lot of people excited. One that, by the way, with the art direction and the style of this game, you're not necessarily going to get a quote-unquote better experience by playing this thing on like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X, even though, yeah, you'll get it in 4K. This should be a 60 FPS 1080p game on Switch and then native 720p 60 FPS on the go. There's not really a reason this style of game, this beat 'em up style of game, wouldn't be that. So yeah, Switch is going to be a pretty amazing experience for this game, comparable to all the other platforms. So um, I'm I'm really excited for it. Uh, the question obviously is when the hell are we going to get it? But again. This just goes to show that while we have a pretty solid lineup from Nintendo first, second, and even some third parties like Shin Megami Tensei Five are uh, coming to Switch the rest of 2021, really 2022 is like the Switch's comeback party, right? So it feels like a bit of a lull for a couple of years over the pandemic. 2022 kind of feels like, yeah, now we're coming out of the pandemic. So now we have this Marvel RPG tactics game. Now we have, you know, Legends Arceus. Now we have Breath of the Wild 2 and Splatoon 3 and Sparks of Hope and Ninja Turtles and Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Like we have all these games coming in 2022. Switch is going to have a very nice lineup. And I honestly think so are others. Now there were other games shown off at Gamescom. Obviously we got some, some Halo Infinite gameplay, which I know some people were really looking uh, forward to seeing, especially if you didn't participate in the beta. Uh, so there, there's been a lot of really good stuff shown off uh, at Gamescom. And I, I will just say, for opening night live, I, I know that there are people that didn't really enjoy it. And I, I will say this, for opening night live, I tend to look at these presentations differently than I think a lot of other gamers do. So I feel like there's a lot of gamers and a lot of YouTubers that look at things like Nintendo Directs, they look at things like E3 presentations or Summer Game Fest or Opening Night Live or even the Game Awards, and they're looking for, I'm just looking for the things I care about, and I'm going to judge the entire presentation based on my own personal gaming preference. And I try really hard not to do that because I think that's un fair to these sort of events. I don't think you should look at the event in a, a little selfish bubble and go, oh, because it didn't massively appeal to me, it was a shit show. And that seems to be a thing that happens all the time. Rapid reactions from fans, rapid reactions from various YouTubers that seem to just try to judge it for not having the things you want it to have. And if you're a Nintendo fan, it's like, but there weren't Nintendo games. Oh, we didn't see Sparks of Hope here. Which, by the way, there's two more events for Gamescom. We're going to see Sparks of Hope at one of those events. So I'm not really worried about seeing that game. It's up for um, a prize at Gamescom. So clearly it's going to be present because uh, Gamescom's for a three-day event. So we, there's a couple more events happening. So we'll get some news on that later. But it's like, just because you didn't get that news today, just because you didn't get the news maybe you were hoping for on certain franchises or you know some of these things coming out in 2022 i'm not disappointed i actually said this in a tweet and i'll say it again opening night live was better than the entirety of e3 and remember e3 had a microsoft press conference and a nintendo press conference the problem was it those conferences were surrounded by so much crap that it really brought down the overall rating and feel hello verizon 5g None of those moments existed here in Opening Night Live. So credit to Jeff Keighley for actually putting together a comparable show. I, well, as an example, I'm not interested in, in the Death Stranding director's cut, but I did like what I saw in the director's cut. And I do think people that are fans of games like that or fans of that game specifically, obviously on PlayStation 4, are going to be very happy with this game on PlayStation 5. I think that, uh, you know, Halo Infinite looked really, really good. I think that all the games showed well. And to me, that means that Jeff Keighley and Gamescom and all that put together a really good opening show uh, for, well, obviously for Gamescom. So I actually thought this was a really, really good show. If I'm going to give it rankings, it's not going to be like a 10 where my hype levels are through the roof. But I'm going to say this was like a solid 7. And considering that I give E3 like a 3, that's way better than the overall E3. And E3 had Breath of the Wild 2, and it only got a 3 from me. Nintendo maybe gets an A for me, but the overall E3 does not. So, um, yeah, I actually thought this was a really solid, a really solid showing for Gamescom. So, um, yeah, that's me. I try to be fair. Not everything at these gaming events has to appeal to me. That's okay. 
what I'm looking for is if what is shown, one, looks like quality games, and two, shows well. So even if it's like you know, Call of Duty Vanguard was shown, I'm probably not picking up Call of Duty Vanguard. But what they did show, I got to admit, it looked pretty good. So I'm willing to take some of my biases out, my personal desires out, and just look at the whole. And I, this is just my me personally. I kind of wish more people did that, but they don't. And since they don't, I feel like videos like this are even more valuable because uh, there's not that many people, I think, like me that take their personal wish lists and desires um, out of judging shows like this uh, and just look at it on the whole and go, you know what, this was actually a really solid showing with a lot of high quality games and all of them looked really, really good. The future of gaming looks brighter after this event. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am the Thunder Robo Dance from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you've been enjoying my videos. I'll uh, be sure to tune in tonight or, well, it's really probably a couple hours after this thing goes up because we have a podcast tonight with special guest Andres Restart. We have so much to talk about from things that obviously happened here at Gamescom. Uh, we have some Pokemon stuff to talk about. We had Nintendo Direct related stuff to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. And I'll drop a little hint here. I heard through the grapevine that Mario Golf is going to be getting some interesting news next week. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. So stay tuned for that next week. We'll be back hello, tonight on the podcast. And be back every single day uh, except our weekends, bringing you guys lots of good gaming content. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from the Center Prime, and I'll catch you each, well, each and every one of you. Is that what I said? Yeah, each and every one of you in the next video. Bye.